Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. I am here with Geeky Sparkles. Hello. And we're going to talk about Hasbro. We're going to talk about Wizards of the Coast. And we're going to talk about them being completely delusional. And the Pinkertons? And the Pinkertons. We'll talk about <laughs> the Pinkertons. <laughs> I don't know if we'll talk about the Pinkertons. Uh, yeah, so they had a little bit of a bump, I guess, in their stock. But I think they've, they've lost that already. They're still kind of floundering around here. Um, CEO, Hasbro CEO Chris Cox says that they're not really worried about kids. They're worried about adult collectors and tabletop gamers. That their real competition is uh, food companies. Wait, 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 what? Yes, food what? companies and yes, because you know adults buy those products. So it's either you buy some soap and buy some cereal or you buy a new overpriced collectible Star well, Wars Well, with the economy being the way it is, where do you think people are gonna put their money? But wait, wait, wait. But then when they say about adult gamers and tabletop people, are they talking about the, the one, the audience they chased off? Or are they talking about the one that they, that they, they claim that they want by their behavior? Yeah, so we're gonna talk about that because this has come up in multiple, multiple videos we've done. It's come up in multiple uh, collector forms, whatever. Hasbro has been gouging their adult collectors and their tabletop gamers for quite a while. And but of they've course, been chasing them off too because you're yes. tabletop people and you're like, just do the coffee shop and the prom you know, campaign. And then you got the guy with the match of the gathering cards and they sent the Pinkertons after him. What did you think was going to happen? Yeah. So we're going to talk about this. This is completely delusional. Like Hasbro has actively chased off. I think a lot of their, their kid customers, their family customers, especially with a lot of the choices they've been making, I think in regards to entertainment, Google the Transformers situation. That That's not sitting well with a lot of parents. Um, but, uh, you know, now they're like, oh, we're going to double down on adult collectors and we're going to double down on tabletop gamers. And you've literally just pissed them off massively. Is this their June picture? It must be. I'm, I'm seriously asking. It probably is. is. That their June? It probably is. So we're going to talk about this. Um, we're going to talk about this because it's funny because you remember the whistleblower from Hasbro a couple of years ago said that they were going to push like totally, they were going to go all in on activism and whatever. And yeah, um, I think we're seeing it now. So before you get into it any further, please, please subscribe for more pop culture news views and rants, guys. You'll get a woohoo if you do. Woohoo! Uh, we have been covering the decline of Hasbro. We used to be massive, massive Hasbro fans. Uh, Hasbro, old Hasbro. My Little Pony. My Little Pony, Gem. Gem, I was going to say Gem. She's also into Gem. I am. Um, and, and, and I like rainbows as well. Like that shelf, I would totally put that shelf up in my house. Not with the Hasbro across it, but everything else about the shelf, I adore. And I would totally put it in my house and put toys in that. You could put you could put your ponies. I love it. Oh my God, I could. could. I want the shelf so I can put my ponies in it. But my old ponies, because your new stuff sucks. Your new ponies look like dog shit. But I put the old classic ponies in there and even some G3s, because that's really pretty. Anyway, so I, You sorry. can color code them. You could be like all That's the what they did with the toys, see? Yeah, yeah. That's what I would do with my ponies. Oh, really, uh, now I need a shelf like that. Now I have to go build one. So uh, anyway. Sorry, distractions. I'm, I'm waiting for the, uh, I'm, I'm waiting for the uh, uh, gender affirming flags with the different Transformers characters now because Transformers for some reason Transformers have become all oh yes uh, with the non but with the pronouns non-binary and... we've got uh LGBTQ plus Transformers they're robots Wait, what yes IDW blame IDW for that which is weird by the way because Hasbro has actually taken some of their properties back to Marvel now they're doing ROM Space Night IDW went like all in on Transformers or trans, they're LGBTQ plus. Well, they're, they're transformers. They're so. robots. They're robots. I just want to understand. Like they were robots. They didn't they're really. Robots. They didn't really. You know. They didn't really. What is it with this new generation that they have to know who everybody's fucking? Really seriously. Like when we were kids, you might have the character might have a boyfriend or girlfriend or whatever, but romance wasn't the main point. It was like you know ass kicking or whatever. But no, now you have to know what every robot, whoever robot wants to screw. We went from ass kicking to ass licking. I mean, I'm just, and, like, and no one needs 20 this. 20 years. Not from a toy company. A toy company. God, the the founders of Hasbro would be freaking the hell out right now. They would be, for sure. Well, I'm surprised a lot of these name Hasbro because of the term bros in it. Bro. And we all know that's the patriarchy. Oh, my God. Um, it has bros, am I right? Almost a year and a half after he took over the company... Hasbro CEO Chris Cox yeah, ran it into the ground. Chris Cox ran it into the ground. He's doubling down on his focus on gaming products and collectibles geared toward older audiences. So there's a problem. There's a problem with that, Chris. Uh, many, many collectors, 
forums are talking about the rapid decline in quality of Hasbro product. They were pissed off about them uh, taking all the plastic off the packaging. They couldn't even see what they're buying. And then what they bought, what they got in the box was crap. Yeah, because you figured they wouldn't open it. They'll keep it in box. People opened it and it was like, what the hell is this? Plus the prices. Yes. Um, I did the double take yesterday. We were at a Walmart and I'm like, is is that the price of the Star Wars black figures? $27? This is ridiculous. For a black series figure? And, they, and, and a lot of times when you look at these figures, not necessarily the black series ones, but when you look at the figures, like they, they're, they're cheap, especially Transformers. They're, they're paint cheap or just cheap plastic. It's yeah. not even, it's not to the level it used to be even just a few years ago. And so what's going on now is that they're trying to you know bleed the collector's dry. They're doing the uh, HasLab, which is like their, their version of Kickstarter. And some of the stuff gets funded. A lot of it hasn't been getting funded. The Ranker didn't get funded. Star Wars stuff especially is not getting funded. Marvel stuff's not getting funded. Um, the only ones I know that are getting funded tend to be the Transformers. G.I. Joe's and Transformers. Yeah, G.I. Joe and Transformers uh, tend to. But the quality, I mean, um, our writer Mike uh, Phelan on ClownfishTV.com, he covers toys mostly. And, and he's posted numerous articles talking about the quality control issues at Hasbro. I mean, I've seen people out there... You know, you don't know what you're getting in the box. Um, one guy unboxed a Starscream. He was missing parts, the 86 Starscream. One guy got one and he left a review, said this is like a bootleg from Alibaba. And they're like, no, this is an official Hasbro. And the paint apps are terrible. The D&D figures especially, they're falling apart. I know. Yeah, they're pretty bad from my understanding, which is unfortunate because we have some in box. Uh, yeah, but I don't. Know. here's the thing. You keep it in box. I don't even know what's in the damn box. What's in the box? I don't know. I want. They can put like nails and sawdust in there. And, you know, I have no idea. Bag of glass. Do you ever see that from yes. <laughs> Bag of Glass from uh, Saturday, Saturday Night Live? That's what they're doing. So, yeah. So, they're pissing off their collector fans. They're pissing off D&D fans. Of course, you know, I'm not going to go through it for the umpteenth time. Google it. The OGL 1.1 debacle where they basically were going to steal your stuff and uh, say it was company property. And uh, then, of course, you know, Magic the Gathering, they were accused of overproducing cards. We've seen cards in landfills. And then to top that shit flavored Sunday off with a cherry, um, they sent the Pinkertons to a YouTuber's house because he just accidentally got a case of cards early and he unboxed them on YouTube and they sent the damn Pinkertons. This progressive company sent the union admitted busting. They did it. Admitted they did it. Sent the union busting Pinkertons to go threaten this guy and his wife. So, but tell me again, Hasbro, how you're you're gonna you know appeal to the the collector market? <laughs> Still want that shelf though. You should get that shelf. You should. I should make that shelf. I like that shelf. Rainbows are for everyone. Rain they yeah they used to be rainbows were for everyone. I'm a rainbow appreciate. I appreciate rainbows. I had uh, Mork and Mindy suspenders when I was a kid. And they, they were used, obviously, they came from a yard sale because Mork and Mindy was like off the air when I was, you know, well, it was like late, was it mid, late 70s? I don't know. But I had the suspenders, had a little moon on it. God, it looks stupid. But I wore them because I liked the reruns of Mork and Mindy. Mm -hmm. I was pretty, God, I look stupid. I'm just sitting there thinking like. Oh, back then you would have been, it would have been okay. Back in the 80s, everything was rainbow. Everything was rainbow. Everybody got, like, if you got a, you know, A on your paper, you got like a little rainbow sticker. Mm -hmm. You got scratch and sniff stickers. Everybody had a cabbage patch. Even Everybody had the crayons and the markers and you line up in your hand and then you do it across the paper. So you get like rainbows on your paper with your crayons and markers. Because rainbows were radical. And right? if they had, if you had the, the smelly markers, you know. <laughs> smelly you, rainbow. No, you know what I'm selling. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? It's fruit salad when you put them all together. The Mr. Sketch, you know? And everybody's <laughs> sniffing the markers and you come home and you have mark your nose would be like five different colors. Did you use the markers today? Yeah, how'd you know? Grape was my favorite. I like so, grape. Anyway. Anyway, um, <laughs> anyway, Chris Cox said Monday that a large swath of Hasbro's customer base is being pinched pretty hard. If I because have a, of food inflation. Because of food. <laughs> Hasbro blames food oh for my God. sales. If I have a concern for the back half of the year, it's oh. really food inflation continuing unabated, said Cox. Wait, wait, wait. But their toy prices are ridiculous. But he's worried about what's hurting Hasbro is people are paying more money for food, so they're not paying for their inflation, which is probably higher. You can't buy a $35 Transformer because the loaf of bread went up a buck. I know. But the $35 Transformer would have been like $25 just a couple years ago. It would have been like $15. I know. Are their prices for Hasbro toys are ridiculous. They have gone up significantly. But it's because of bread. <laughs> I'm sorry. I can't. So I, I got to tell you, 
I'm, you know, we go to the store, we look at toys, we dabble in toy sales too. That's a whole nother thing. But I, I, I'm over Hasbro. Like I'm, I think after, I think they have the Armada Transformers legacy that are coming out, like the Optimus and stuff. Like after that, I'm done. I'm done. I'll buy third party Transformers and I'll buy these lovely beauties right here. Yeah. So you're going to talk about them for a minute? These are Beast Box, which I, I just found out about a couple of months ago and we bought some. And uh, we They're might have 52 toys, 52 toys. And they are uh, very, very cool guys. 52 toys doesn't hate you. I don't think they're going to send the Pinkertons to your house. They just want to sell really cool robots. And these are really awesome. And most people want to buy really cool robots. So it's a win win. They have they have other ones coming that change into like animals that change into jets and stuff. Robots change into jets, things like that. But these are animals. Yeah, these are cool. The rabbits are really cool. But uh, yeah, we might unbox them. You merge these. the rabbits together to get. Uh, more not, not more rabbits, a cube. Oh. I was going to say more rabbits, but it turns into a cube. They all turn into a cube. Yeah, these are beast box. And you put them in like a little case, but then they have they have vehicles now they're doing. They've got mecha they're doing. And these are actually better quality toys than the stuff you're going to get from Hasbro. And the packaging's beautiful. And they're, they're really cool. And uh, I think I'm going to switch. I'm like, now, they are also expensive. Yeah, they are. But it's like $26 for one of these. Yeah, but I also don't feel like I'm getting ripped off. Like Hasbro, you get a 20... Like I've looked at their $26 Transformers. You don't get much for $26. No, no um, but I just think it's funny. Back to the story. It's funny to me that he's... Con so his concern is because inflation costs on food. Yes. People aren't going to have the money yes. to buy toys. And they're going to blame their failure on the fact that people... But the inflation costs on food have been going on for a couple of years now. Um, it's getting it, it was up like really bad last year. But you still raised your prices on your toys. And... So basically, this is like him trying to keep his job. It's not It's not my fault. It's inflation on food. I, I think this is exactly what's going on because on his watch, everything has gone to shit. You can buy a lot of food for what you pay for one Transformer. Some of those Transformers are like, what, 50, 60 bucks? That's no, a grocery can, order. Yeah. yeah. Or at least take the family out to dinner or something. You know? Yeah. I mean, I joke a little bit with our team, but I think it's serious. Our competitor right now is Unilever and General Mills more than it is Mattel or Lego. Yeah. Oh, my um, God. Cox was previously the president and head of uh, Hasbro's digital gaming division. That's why they're they're trying to turn D&D into a shitty mobile app. Uh, he was tapped as the CEO after Brian Goldner lost his battle with cancer. Nobody knew he had cancer. He kept it yeah, private. Yeah, that was awful. Uh, he probably didn't. I mean, honestly, he probably, one, didn't want people asking about it all the time or whatever. And two, he probably didn't want to affect the stock price. Oh, well, this is wrong here. Since taking over, uh, he the company known for Mr. Potato Head. Mm -mm. It's mix. It's potato P mix MX, yeah. It's potato people. It's potato not potato persons. head. Not uh, potato heads. There is no Mister or Mrs. and stuff. Remember, they, they you know we can't have that. Cox has to contend with the glut of inventory and shrinking sales, while persistent inflation continues to tighten the budgets of American households. No, you have this wrong, Mister Cox. The reason people aren't buying your product is that your products are shit and they're overpriced. Right. There's right. a market for good product. Yeah, the thing is, kids still have you're know, still holidays, kids still have birthdays, you know, things like that. People need to buy the kids, you know, buy the kids for those events. Mm -hmm. The thing is, you know, yes, people are spending more on food. That's true, and people probably have, have less disposable income to buy your products. But it doesn't help when your products are like what was a twenty dollar product a few years ago is now thirty, forty dollar product. So this this is very telling too. I I, I want to point this out because this this should piss some people off. When you look at the top 20% of discretionary income households, particularly the collector market, that market is staying buoyant and healthy. Yeah, they're buying other things, other than Hasbro things, by the way. Said Cox, who earned $9.4 million in 2022, a 250% increase in his compensation compared to 2021. For doing what? Just chasing off your core demographic? And look what's related. Hasbro to cut 15% of workforce after weak holiday sales, but Cox gets a raise. This guy is a cock. He literally chased off the collectors that he's yes. saying is that the market is. Yeah. He keeps raising prices so it's unaffordable for families and then saying it's because food costs too much. Yeah. It's like you can trace. Now, whether it's – no, I don't think this is what happened on Goldner's watch. Goldner actually seemed to give a shit. You can trace all of the bullshit that's been happening at Hasbro, all of the, um, the activism. You can trace the – uh, dip in quality. You can trace the price gouging. You can trace the Pinkertons and the OGL one point. You can trace all of that back to Chris Cox. As soon as he came in, this company started going to shit. What do you think happens? You put a dick in charge. You get fucked. Exactly. Right? Um, 
But he gets a raise for that. He gets a 250% well, no, raise. that's how it works. It seems like whoever fails, He's rewarded you get rewarded for, 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 you know, sucking. Uh, Cox. <laughs> Cox sucks. Um, <laughs> the Cox. Sorry, it's just themselves. Uh, anyway, change your name, dude. Hasbro Pulse, the company's direct to consumer business that curates high end products for the collector market. And again, um, they're doing real, real well on this one, too. Yeah, right. Uh, saw sales increased by 40% in the first quarter of the year. That's true for certain products, not for other ones. Wizards of the Coast, which Cox said tends to have a customer base who is older and savvier. Then why are you pissing them off and telling them they're terrible people? Yeah. They saw sales increase by 12%. But these are the people that you keep saying, you know, you're changing everything because you're pandering to this younger group of people that are the activist types. You're basically telling the older people you don't want them anymore because they're problematic, but then you're saying that those are the ones who are buying stuff. I, what the hell is going on? Who was in charge? I, I just, there, there are no adults in charge, right, of this toy. I just, I just, I don't. You have a customer base who is older and savvier, a bit higher income, who the sales increased by twelve increased by twelve percent. The people that you've actively been targeting and pissing on. <sighs> we haven't seen the long tail yet. And this we talked about this, we did but another video. comes back around, slaps him in the face. We have another video that we did today uh, talking about Disney, and it takes a while for companies in many cases to see the results of their idiotic actions. I think with Hasbro. The um, reputation that their their toys are garbage now, especially the collectors, which it, uh, collectors expect a lot more from their stuff than you know Timmy, who's getting a ten dollar whatever toy. Um, when you're paying fifty to a hundred dollars for a something, it better be good. It gets worse. Did you read the rest of this? It gets worse. Okay. Oh my god. But the general consumer continues to get pinched pretty hard by inflation. Particularly food inflation. Bullshit. Bullshit. These consumers are also losing some COVID support and social programs that the government Whoa, put whoa, in whoa, 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 whoa. Right, 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 right. What? Your poor asses aren't getting your COVID stim stimmy checks anymore. Um, and social programs the government put in place in the last couple of years. Who described these buyers as very promotionally sensitive and price sensitive. Then why the fuck are you charging so much for your toys that their kids can't afford them? Here's an idea. Here's an idea. Maybe you'd sell more toys and it'd be a, qua a quantity issue if you lowered your price. If you care so much about these people that are, are your, your poor asses that don't get government support anymore, people, as you know, that you're so you know fascinated with, people could afford your fucking toys. And, and that while speaking at the investor conference, Cox said Hasbro tends to be more oriented towards collectors and higher income consumers, particularly when it comes to brands like Magic the Gathering and Dungeons and Dragons. You mean the Magic the Gathering audience that you sent the Pinkertons after and the Dungeons and Dragons audience where you do coffee shop and prom promotions because you want to change it away from the, the terrible men and the, you know, bigoted men that have been your customers for so long? Wasn't, didn't one of their people say they wanted the men out of... Dungeons and Dragons, they couldn't wait to people like yeah. them, which is a man, was yes. out. Yes, actually the guy who, I think it was Kyle Brink, who's in charge of D&D &D right now, said he couldn't, it was a podcast. Now, I think he was taken a little bit out of context, but the sentiment is very obvious. He said, I can't wait until basically all the old white straight guys like myself get out of this hobby so other people can take my place. But you then know. they just got done saying that it's because of the because old of white the, guys that, you, yes. that you've complained about for the last two or three years yes. that you have your sales at yes. all. Yes. What the fuck? So, yeah. So this explains why they're freaking out so much, why they're sending the Pinkertons, why they're trying to control OGL, why they're, because they know this, this is their cash cow, but then they're going to insult their core audience. You know what I'm saying? Wait, wait, like, wait, wait, there, might, there might be some hope though. We've got to do right by both sides, said Cox, who explained the company plans to take pretty aggressive pricing actions and getting ahead of its inventory to begin retail promotions in the second half of the year ahead of the holidays. That's right. But are your pricing thing is going to be coming with reduced quality because it's already shitty toys. So you're going to lower the price and drop the quality. So those uh, stimmy check people that, you know, you need them back so they can afford it because those poor losers, oh um, they're not the rich audience that you want to, you want to promote. You need to promote to both. It's, it's crazy though. You look at the toys there for kids and you can see like there are two Hasbro's. It's either, it's either way overpriced collectibles, you know, collector market stuff. That's not worth the money they're asking mm -hmm. Or it's cheap ass dollar store level quality. Like a lot of the the kitty transformers, the kitty Star Wars toys are like 
dollar store oh, toy quality. Like I've seen some like practically hollow transformers that they have for like ten or twelve dollars. Yes, yes. And they don't garbage. do anything. They just stand there. They're garbage. Yeah, it's garbage. It's garbage. But that's for the that's for the poor asses because it's either buy my ten dollar figure or buy bread. <laughs> God. Um. So the comments come about six months after Hasbro executives informed investors of its cost cutting plan, dubbed Blue Point Blueprint. Blueprint. 2.0. Is that why their stuff's garbage? It's going to save a projected $250 million, $300 million annually over the next three years. Uh, Hasbro's plan focuses on investing in fewer, investing in fewer, but its most identifiable brands. In January, the company cut 15% of its workforce. Yeah, and this guy After got- After a disappointing holiday season. Why was it disappointing? Because your stuff sucks and your prices are too high. Yes. But let's give him a raise. Uh, Hasbro's looking to unload its E1 television and film business which Cox confirmed Monday is still in progress. Good luck with that in this, because everybody's selling everything at this point, right? Mm -hmm. Finding a buyer, you mean? Yeah. yeah. Uh, I think the bit, the biggest pivot between Brian Goldner is that he was oriented toward entertainment, and I am more oriented toward play. Bullshit. Bullshit. You're more oriented. You're oriented towards bullshit. Uh, play has been the thing that's driven brand relationships with consumers. Doesn't mean entertainment won't be a part of our story moving forward. I think it'll be a right sized portion. So I do, I do agree that I think Hasbro, Hasbro wanted to be the next Disney. They wanted to become like a media empire, but unfortunately most of their movies sucked ass. No, he's right. They are geared towards play, playing the customer, playing the customer, right? Uh, almost a year and a half after he took over, Cox said he's doubling down on his focus on gaming products and collectibles geared toward older audiences. After you just pissed them all off. Yeah, after you pissed them off. Oh my God. This is a guy trying to save his job. This guy is trying to save his job. I'm oh, telling you. Let's recap. Hasbro started with a, you can't have Mr. Potato Head anymore. It's potato thems, potato, potato people. Potato thems. You, Non-binary you, you, transformers. You go to, to Dungeons and Dragons and you keep making things that are very agenda activist driven and you made changes that make no sense, like getting rid of certain characters or whatever. And then uh, you, you, you said that you people saying that you want people that are like you're basically a core audience to be out of the, the, the group yeah. for new people. And then you're making toys. You've raised the price geared for collectors, but you've made the quality dog shit. People would pay the price if it was worth it. And now you're now you're saying that it's because people they're worried about buying food and that you need to, to cater to the people that you've pissed off. That Am I summing it up pretty Pretty much. This is a guy who doesn't know what the fuck this company is or what the fuck he's doing and he needs to go. Like all you have to do, this is like Disney. All you have to do, Disney, is make good animated movies, make good movies, be Disney, run the theme parks effectively, give people what they want. All you got to do, Hasbro, is be a competent toy company. But again, they tried to Disney themselves. They went out and they bought every other competitor. They went and bought this and bought that E1. They bought that because they were going to be a movie studio. Except your movies are all dog shit. So good luck with that. Um, you know what I'm saying? Like it's not going to happen. Just be a good toy company. They're even they're even outsourcing their toys to other companies now. This is a company that's like outsourcing its toys. You're a toy company outsourcing to basic fun mm -hmm. and they're making a lot of the Hasbro toys now or at least the collector- Well, they're doing the ponies, aren't ones. they? Yeah, they're doing that. They're, they were doing at one point- Which reminds me, I have to look into those new pony re re reissues. Anyway. Oh, the celestial ones? Yeah, yeah they're pretty cool. Those. But they were doing like the strawberry shortcakes and they were doing, because they bought, you know, Kenner. They were doing strawberry shortcake vintage. They were doing vintage ponies. I mean, this is all stuff that Hasbro, if they want to focus on their core brands, should be doing. But they're not. They're too busy. Why well, didn't they focus on their modern core brands? They have GI Joe, Transformers. They do the bar, the, they do the princesses stuff for Disney, things like that. Or is Mattel have it back again? I can't even remember. I don't it goes know. back and forth. But the thing is, there's things they can focus on. But if they're focusing on adult collectors, you know, I don't know. I, here, you know, th this is the thing too. And they said they're going to focus on fewer but core brands. Hasbro back in the 70s, 80s, and even early 90s innovated. Like the reason that these brands are still around, My Little Pony and Transformers and G.I. Joe. Oh, instead of making new brands? They're not making new stuff. They're just going back to the same well over and, and over and over and acquiring. Just like Disney. They're not coming up with anything themselves. Like remember back in the day, Hasbro had some misfires. They, they had lots of lines that uh, were misfires, but they still came up with, you know, Air Raiders and Visionaries and the girls they had, what was it, Moon Dreamers? And even Jim wasn't like a huge 
deal. It wasn't a huge sales deal for them, but they tried and it's still well remembered. And now they even outsource Gem to other toy companies too. But like, they're not even trying to innovate anymore. They're just trying to, I don't know what the hell, just bleed the existing customers they have, the aging customers that they have, bleed them dry on one hand and then insult them on the other. Mm -hmm. And it's like, you can't have it. And then make place. it unaffordable for families. Right. And they right. complain about that too. Yeah, so this, you get what you deserve. Hasbro's just, they're a lost cause. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm not buying their stuff and I'm not doing it as some like big, oh, I'm gonna make a big deal. I'm gonna boycott Hasbro. Just, I have no interest in anything they're producing at this point. So I don't know. We're gonna wrap this one yep. up. I think we're gonna wrap this one up. Please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, and we'll talk later. Bye. Sorry, I, I yelled loudly. That's okay. I got I got the limiter on. Okay, so uh, you can tell like pitch, setting. Yeah, you can you can sell you can Wait, tell. Really, it automatically limits it when it, I yell. It does when you get when the pitch gets too high. It it <laughs> it does. When sometimes if you sound like all robotic, it's oh because it's God. it's bringing the decibels down. Okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Help support the channel. Go to thereef.support and get early access to podcasts, videos, and other content. That's thereef.support.